Hey, I'm John Grease III, and you guys know that I love checking out home gyms and getting a tour of them. So it is a pleasure to be in the home gym virtually of Steve and Amy Yacoub. Hey, I don't want you to just watch this video. I need you to like, subscribe, and if you're already a subscriber, I want you to join our channel for 99 cents a month so you can help us improve YouTube for the home gym community. Okay, back to the video. Steve, thanks for having me over. Oh, thanks for inviting me. This is, this is awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. Man, you are such an inspiring dude. And over the course of this conversation, I want to talk about um, your battle with cancer and your podcast. So normally we start with equipment, but I'd like for you to start with the banners, including that one that's right above your head that says never surrender. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was diagnosed with uh, colon stage four colon cancer almost two years ago. And my first uh, wording or, uh, you know, whatever you call it, mean was no time for excuses and then I got hit with cancer and it's more like never surrender to it and so that's where that that came from um and then of course believe strength and persevere and that you know that goes for any adversity not just cancer so you know I thought that was pretty important you train uh kids don't you yeah so uh I got my uh my kids uh, I got my stepson he's 18 I've been training since I think he was like 14 or 15 um, and then my son is 14 years old. He's been getting into it. I do uh, train some football players, hockey players. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, this is a great way we work on speed, agility, strength training, obviously, GPP, you know, we'll do strongman, powerlifting, bodybuilding, uh, you know, things like that. So. All right. So <laughs> that is an, that's an awesome thing, especially the fact that you are sharing your knowledge with kids. So let's uh, show us around this uh, habitat for muscularity that you've built here for a uh, home gym for about 15 years okay. and, two, and this is the third house the first two houses were in the basement and uh, we decided when we moved here to uh, you know change it up a little bit put it in the garage because you can uh, you know uh, you got overhead height uh, yeah. the downside heat. of course in the winter time I, I live in upstate New York so we get a lot of snow in winter, but the garage is fully insulated. Uh, the garage door, eventually, maybe we'll upgrade that down the road. But right now, with price, uh, I mean, the garage door is like double of what it normally would cost right now. So we got to wait on that. All right. So here we've got a uh, barbell rack with lots of uh, barbells. We've got our farmer carries up on the top there. All right. We've got a, just a regular old Swiss bar. Uh, we got a technique bar that's like uh, for the kids. Uh, it's like 18 pounds. That one I got over a Titan. Here's a uh, axle bar. Okay. All right, that one's Titan also. And then Titan's got their camera bar. You can't beat the price for it. So um, I know uh, Rep Fitness just came out, a nice one, but uh, that one I got a little while ago. Uh, this right. is a Road Ohio power bar. Uh, then I got a Synergy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that company, but the no. Synergy. Where, where, where is Synergy based out of? Oh, I'm not, somewhere in the U.S., okay. um, but I'm not sure okay. you know, exactly what state. And then this bar right here, I've had it for, geez, uh, 15, 16 years. This is my first bar. It was new at the time, just a basic gym bar, but uh, it's, I call it a beater bar. So I can use this uh, if I want to beat up on a bar or uh, landmines, things like that. Okay. And then, of course, this is from Titan 2, which is really cool. It's like a like Yukon version of the duffel bar. Okay. Valor Fitness uh, does sell some good things. Uh, this is a Valor Fitness deadlift bar. Okay. Uh, so you can see, obviously, it's longer and a thinner diameter. This is the uh, it's S, uh, the version 2 SSB. I guess okay. they came up their logo now as colors in it. All but right. That was before they did that. And then, of course, their uh, Titan Fitness uh, camera bar down here, too, which is... Uh, great for core doing squats and uh getting in position because it's definitely rocks um i am not a fan of titan fitness i mean for multiple reasons but one thing that i always say is that your home gym has to be customized to you because it's not like i live there you live there so what are some of the things that you found that you like about titan that causes you to continue to go back to them um when they first came out we ended up buying a couple of pieces of equipment and uh, and things, attachments and things like that. And we were not happy. I actually ended up selling a couple of things. Um, and before COVID hit, I was a big 
one on selling a piece of equipment that maybe I won't use anymore as much because the space is so valuable. You, oh. you know, every once in a while, every couple of years, you're like, well, I don't really use that too much anymore. Let's swap it out with yeah. something else. And the used market was good, uh, you know, before this, but now it's been tough. So it's almost worth, especially a lot of these companies are going through shipping. It's almost worth just buying new. So that's that's what it happened. But I think Titan's getting better on some of their things, um, you know, the prices. And I also look at Valor Fitness because they have free shipping. We've got a yoke that I got from them, and, it, and which I'll show you in a, in a bit, an electro leg extension combo. But yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's, it's one of those things is like you have to customize it to your needs, to your situation. And if you get, you know, if the main reason why I don't like Titan is because for me, the quality control isn't there. But if you keep on getting quality equipment, I don't care where you got it from. It's working for you. I'm like, it's kind of like, you know, I guess it's kind of like I don't really gamble, but it's like if you're gambling and you're hot, keep on going. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, it makes sense to me. So, yeah, good deal, man. Well, here we got a dumbbell rack. Okay. Uh, these dumbbells are from Frey Fitness. Okay. Um, and the uh, rack, um, I was going to get a Frey Fitness dumbbell rack, but at the time that the dumbbells were ready, they didn't have any racks in stock. So I ended up going with one from Amazon. You also have a Frey Fitness adjustable bench here. Okay. All right. And then, of course, uh, we've got my heater. Brush heater on a 220 a chalkboard and another banner up there. So did you, you had somebody install that heater? Because that is a big deal. I mean, I have a yeah, garage I, gym and that is one of the top things that garage gym owners are always looking for. How do we keep this place warm? Because it's not, you know, the, the home builder didn't design it as a living space, you know? And so, yeah, let's talk about that heater. We're not skipping past that. That's important. So did yeah, you have that installed? Did it come with the house? No, I, I installed it myself. Um, okay. What I did was I ran a 220 line. The good thing is, though, my uh, box in the basement is right behind this wall. Uh, so I was e easily able to uh, tie in a line. And then what I did was I made it into, instead of hardwiring the heater, I just put a plug on it so I could unplug it and plug it. Okay. And then, of course, it's got uh, a remote. The thermostat, though, on, on these guys aren't that great. I mean, obviously, it's not 80 degrees in here, and that's what it says. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I kind of have other thermostats, and then I have an override switch um, over there by the speaker that I can just turn on and off the heater. Um, gotcha. It is a thermostat, but, again, it's not, not automatic because these aren't, aren't made for that. Um, but, so what do you uh, just turn uh, it on? Like, you just turn it on, like, an hour or so before you come in the train? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, maybe like half an hour. You know, having the garage um, insulated is, helps, but the door is a big factor. You got to have like an R16, R17 door. And I think this one is just regular stock builder's grade R6, R7. Okay. So, you know, gotcha. you lose a lot of heat through that door. Right. Okay. All right. Well, you were about to show me something else when I started, when I nerded out on heaters. So, what is oh, yeah. So I got, uh, so we got some Frey Fitness bumpers okay. here on both sides. We got a Frey Fitness competition bench. Okay. So this is at the height. And the reason why I wanted a flat bench is because when I bench um, and when I train uh, others for bench and for powerlifting, you know, the, the, the adjustable bench to me is not ideal. I like a nice, sturdy, heavy bench um, that's not going to go anywhere not going to have that gap, not going to have that taper. Um, so, you know, we just, I just went with it here. Frey Fitness uh -huh. is a good company from what I can tell. Um, they're based out of Tennessee, I believe. Uh, yeah. and I actually, I actually met the guy who owns it. Uh, he's a army veteran, uh, a oh. U.S. army veteran. I met him when we were at an expo or yeah, an expo and we were actually live streaming for something and we got introduced to him. And uh, so I got to touch some of his stuff and I was, you know, I was impressed with the quality, you know, with that. I mean, I had like 10 minutes with it, but I was impressed with the quality. So glad to see that you're finding that you're finding it useful. Yeah. I mean, we got this stuff when they were just, just about to get popular. They weren't popular just yet. And so I ended up speaking to the owner, trying to get a long list of equipment because when I got diagnosed with cancer in April of 2020, 
um, I decided to take advantage because people were buying on Facebook Marketplace double of what it costs new because you can't find anything. Oh yeah, because so COVID, yeah. Since I, got really sick, I just ended up selling a lot of stuff and then we just upgraded with the money. Uh, so I got chains uh, here. Uh, and then this is a, uh, you might have to back up here, but this is a Freight Fitness a rack, three by three, one inch holes, one inch hardware. Okay, does it come with those lever arms? Uh, that was separate, and I did get them um, at the time when I paid for them. I think I paid one sixty nine for them. I mean, okay. now they're like, I think if you go to their site, I mean, there might be three four hundred dollars now, like everybody else. But at the time, they were cheap, so I just bought them. Okay, all right. Yeah, all I mean, right. you know, they're great. I got the uh, Ghost Strong uh, roller cups, which is really cool. Okay. And then I can't remember these guys, the engineer, APT engineering or something like that. I don't know. They're okay. on Facebook all the time. They make these custom uh, lips for spotter okay. arms, J cups, things like that. Okay. The cool thing about the, the roller, the Go Strong roller, is for people who are concerned about their bar getting scratched up, it's, it's, uh, it rolls really easily. It's just oh. like, a, it's almost like the setup you find on like a, a com competition combo rack where it rolls out from side to side. And the other side of it too is it's easier to get the barbell adjusted so that you can center it on your back before you have to lift it off. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that is a nice touch. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we, uh, oh, we love them, you know, and like you said, you know, when you're squatting heavy, you can slide it back and forth and you're not like trying to jar the bar, um, you know, trying to get it centered again, so. Yeah. And of course, these are the Titan Fitness, uh, Original ones, they're okay. I use them once in a while. Um, the you know the mono lift attachments. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Of course, uh, this corner, we just have things in bins, sneakers. Um, I got the Titan Fitness again. The plyo boxes. Now these are really good quality foam. Believe it or not, I was surprised. Okay. Um, the material, the vinyl material, the stitching and the zippers, really pretty good quality. I've had no trouble with stitching coming apart. Uh, we've done box jumps, slams on them and everything. So we beat them up pretty good and uh, they withstand, uh, they withstand pretty good. What part of New York are you in? Upstate New York, Rochester. Rochester, okay. Because I see a Philadelphia Eagles decal there and... <laughs> And I'm fairly certain that the Bills Mafia is hunting you down as we speak. You're like, because you 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 might have had an excuse to say, okay, I'm a Giants fan, but that Eagles right there, I can't believe the Bills Mafia. I mean, now those secrets out. You know, if you you have to pay me money for this not to get on YouTube, so the Bills Mafia <laughs> is coming after you. So you may want to change your locks on your doors. <laughs> some uh, security software out there, you know. <laughs> An Eagles fan. Oh, the oh, oh the dirtiest of birds. I don't care what the Falcons yeah. say. Throw him the banner over there. Yeah, we got a banner up there too. You know, the Eagles oh. banner. Oh, he's unrepentant. Look at that. Unrepentant with that Eagles loyalty. Okay. <laughs> live, your, live your life. That's fine. <laughs> All right. But anyway, but yeah, what else do you have? Yeah, so we got, uh, you know, we got some bands. We do do uh, some band trainings, okay. speed squats, speed uh, bench, speed deadlifts. And then with the chains, I got a couple different size belts depending on who comes over. You try uh, strength conjugate? Yeah. So okay. everything, you know, just change it up, you know, mix in some strongman GPP, mix in some bodybuilding, hypertrophy. So that's what I try to, uh, okay. you know, when I train my kids or, uh, you know, the, the, the high school kids. Unless it's sport uh, specific, then we'll do more uh, agility and speed, gotcha. you know. And, okay. Bio. And this is the um, the Valor Fitness combo, um, leg extension and leg curl. Okay. So both. All right. Uh, again, fitness sells one, but this is a little cheaper on Valor Fitness. Probably similar quality. I have no complaints. We use it all the time. We actually attach bands. We've got these smaller bands, um, and we actually do a lot of uh, some of these machines. I'll show you as we get around, we'll I'll, I'll attach a mini band to add a little bit more resistance to the plate loaded machines. Okay. So it kind of gives a little bit more of a, a burnout and a burn 
you know, if you're, you know, if you're doing a, a T-bar row machine or a, uh, or the like, you know, just get that burn on the tightness of the resistance from the band. Gotcha. Okay. This right here is from Frey Fitness crossover machine. Um, it was a tough call. I had to decide because of the room. Do I get a lap pull down seated row machine or do I get a crossover, uh, crossover cable machine? Okay. I decided to get a cable crossover machine because we can still do pull downs. Um, and we could still do seated, uh, you know, things like that. It's just tough because you can't get your legs, hold yourself down. But I've, right. actually put, but I've actually sat down low on the ground and I put a couple of bands across. And when I get in a position, I'll, I'll wrap the tight, tight bands, a couple of bands over my thighs. Then you can go a little bit heavier and you won't swing up. So it'll hold you down. It's just a little hack. Yeah, that's one of the big things, man. Whenever you have any kind of pull down set up in a home gym, unless it's a dedicated lap pull down, you have to figure out how to keep yourself on the ground. And so sometimes yeah. you can't go as heavy. I mean, I've done, I've done all kinds of things. Um, but the, the best thing I've found is to just sit a sandbag across my lap. But Ooh, I, I like good. the idea. With, yeah, I like the idea. with I like what you got going on with the bands, too. Because sometimes I do it. Um, I, my pulley setup is set up so I can do it either with the rack or I can do it outside the rack. And so I'll take, if I'm outside the rack, I'll just take a sandbag one of my heavy sandbags, I'll just do it across my lap. And then when I'm ready to get up, I just roll it off of myself, you know? Yeah. That's a good it's idea. Just, well, it just sucks because you have to, it's like like what you're saying, like, okay, you got the bands, because now you got one hand holding the, the pulley, and then you got the other hand trying to figure out how to get this thing across you to hold yourself down. And so it can, you look like a monkey humping a football for a little bit, but then you're like, okay, you, once you get the, the, the science down, it's like, it's easy. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, I just do this. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. So. And sometimes I'll, I'll get them to do uh, pull-ups and chin-ups uh, because you can go, obviously, your body weight go a little heavier. And then you can, like, pre-exhaust yourself. So then you don't have to go crazy weight on this machine, you know, gotcha. and then you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, pulling down more weight than what you weigh than you're floating. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and so I got the mag grip here. A uh, couple other attachments. I actually have the Mark Bell uh, attachment. It's a stretch uh, for triceps or for uh, a couple different uh, pull work. It's uh, really gives it a little bit of an extra edge. Okay. You know, and of course, uh, Jay Cutler met him at an uh, expo, got his uh, autograph. So that was okay. pretty cool. All and right. Mark thanks. Bell. Mark Bell sent me the uh, lift through it uh, banner because he heard about uh, uh, me going through cancer. He sent me a couple of t-shirts too, things like that. Okay, so, yeah. Appreciated that. Yeah, and then over here, we got, of course, our preacher bar, our preacher bench. This was actually uh, one of the original pieces of equipment that I have left in the original gym from 15 years ago. This wow. is the beer. I think that's about it. Everything else is, came after the bar. Uh, everything else was sold, but yeah, this is, I've had this for a long time, um, and uh, my daughter is 16 years old now, she doesn't cheer as much anymore, she used to do a lot of tumbling and cheer, so she doesn't do that anymore, so what I did was we took these, uh, the gymnastic mats, the blue ones there, and I just cut them up, and used two kinds of tape on there, and I used them as crash pads, okay. uh, for like a log bar and things like that. Um, I know Titan just had a, uh, a sale on their crash pads, but, you know, hey, reusing stuff that you got at home already, I mean, why not? Oh, yeah, 100%. There's, yeah, two sets there. So, yeah, of yeah. course, this, this uh, I got it. Uh, um, somebody was getting rid of it. An elderly person, I think, was sitting in her basement for years. And uh, I think I got it for, like, 75 bucks. Yeah, that, and, that's uh, one of those Airdynes from before they were assault bikes. They're yeah, big, they're, and then you just, just find them like in the corner of the wrestling room in the, or like in gym class and everybody just avoided them. Now they're like chic. Everybody's like, oh, it's an assault bike. I'm like, yeah, that's not what we called it. But yeah. yeah right. okay. So that's an original, like that's, that thing looks like it was made like in the 1980s. Is that a swim? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was in the 80s. Yeah. Nice. I mean, but the, the screen works. Uh, you know, I oil up the chain. I've got no issues with it. I mean, this thing is still doing really good. I use some of this... Uh, High end uh, 3M, almost like electrical tape. It's really wide, but I ended up taping that down, and that did really wonders for the cold air, especially in the wintertime. Got that cold air blowing. Oh, yeah. 
Good old reverse hyper. Okay, now that piece of equipment right there, that's one of those things that people in home gyms always debate about whether they should have. Because as you know, space is at a premium. So you're like, well, why should I have one thing in here that only does one thing? So Louis Simmons is not about to send you a check. I'll just tell you that now. He's not going to send me one either, all right? But let's, for the sake of our audience, talk about why it's important to have, why you felt it was important to have a reverse hyper in your home gym, despite the amount of space it takes up. I mean, it doesn't look like it takes up a lot of room, but it takes up, it does take up some. So talk about why it was important to you to have that. Yeah, so this, compared to others, uh, does have a uh, slimmer profile to it. Um, it. It does fold up. The only thing, though, that, I wish that they thought about it when they folded up is that it folded, it, I wish it folded up this way. So what happens is you gotta actually fold it down from the other side, pull it away from the wall and then kind of hug it and turn it if you wanna stow away it against the wall. I think they kind of did it backwards. I mean, it, it, obviously you can't have this side against the wall because this is where it swing. But what we decided was we got the room, we'll just leave it up. You know, and if we need more room, I, you know, I can always fold it. It folds up really easy. Uh, but the, uh, you know, especially me getting older, but even for young folks, um, you know, even my stepson, 18 years old, I'll get him on this. You know, there's a lot of spinal compression, you know, because we do like yoke, you know, or, or deadlift or heavy squats or anything like that. It's really compressing in your spine. And I really think that the uh, reverse hyper does a good job on keeping recovery. You know, a lot of people, they just go right to the gym and they don't even warm up. So I, I try to teach the kids you know, yeah, I, I understand you're not my age at 50 years old. I take like 20, 25 minutes to warm and lube all my joints up and stuff like that before I even touch anything. But we do a lot of band work, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of mobility work before we actually start lifting heavy. And I think this is, this is pretty important. And it's great for the hammies and the glutes, of course. So. Gotcha. Okay. Let's check out that log. So here we got a log bar. This is again from Titan. You know, if you look at a lot of the companies, though, they're pretty similar uh, and, you know, and they're all, you know, they're all getting their stuff from overseas. Yeah, maybe the welding's a little bit different here and there, but I gotta tell you, the, uh, they've come a long way, but uh, we've got no complaints with this log bar. And uh, it's a 10 inch, uh, because the competitions are gonna be 10 or 12. So if you go, if anybody's gonna do a strong man comp, uh, it, it's easier to transition a training with a 10 inch bar going to a 12 inch than starting with an eight inch. Uh, gotcha. Maybe the eight, eight inch would be maybe for the kids, you know, or something gotcha. like that. But anybody getting one, I suggest going with the 10, at least. The 10. We've got an Atlas stone and some sandbags down here. Underneath the 75, we've got 100, and then I've got 150 down here. And of course, that's a battle rope. And then over here, we've got, the, again, we've got the Valor Fitness yoke, which is pretty easy to put together. Uh, we just, you know, when the weather's good, we use it outside. Uh, okay. We got the sled, which we do push pull sleds all the time, even backwards. Um, and I do have a flip tire, but it's not here; it's in the shed. I mean, I even have a uh, you know uh, a dolly when we're going out there lugging heavy plates out in the street, you know, or uh, the sandbag or anything like that. That comes in handy. What's going on with this floor here? You know, usually when when they pitch uh, a floor, right, a patio or a garage, it's usually about three quarters inch for every ten feet. Now, for this 20 feet, I've got a five, five and a half inch um, slope, right. which is awful. Yeah. So there's no way that I can, you know, uh, you know, and then just to mess around with a platform and just trying to level certain things, it was better for me. To, I'm pretty handy. So it's better for me to put a subfloor in. So that's gotcha. what I did. So as you can see here, the height of this floor right here is actually leveled all the way to the ground in the back of the garage. So what's that like about four inches? I'm just five, estimating. About five, five inches, yeah. Yeah. So a let me ask you. And it shaved down a two by six a little bit. Okay. Because uh, that was just a little bit too high, but yeah. And uh, we I put in this half wall because uh, you know a lot of things with the garage, um, it, you, know, you got leaves, you got dust. Oh you know, we yeah. Still get, we still get pretty dusty in the garage, but what's nice about the half wall is it really keeps the dirt. It really does a big, nice job keeping the dirt yeah. out. And I like that. Okay. Having to step up too, all the little stuff from the outside, the little grass and everything else catches down here and I could just broom it. 
So it really keeps the gym, you know, fairly, uh, fairly clean. Yeah. I like that. And so, and then if you guys move, you can just pull it out and it's done. I did not attach the subfloor with any concrete screws. I wanted it floating okay. um, in case we moved or whatever, or we wanted to remove it. And I didn't want uh, drill holes with tap on screws all over the floor for the next owner. So it's just, it's just floating. So, so, this, this, uh, so for somebody who's listening to this, who's like, well, I don't know if I want to go to all that trouble. Having that subfloor actually helps you with heating and heating the yeah. area too, because it gets yeah. you up off the cold ground. So that is actually a solid idea. How did, but if your floor is higher, how did that affect you as far as the height of the rack that you could get? That's about, a, I think 105, 105 inches. So I still got plenty of room on top. Okay. So I, no, I think I've got 10 foot ceilings in here. Here we got the Titan, again, another Titan fitness piece. Okay. Um, this is their version two. I know. By the end of this video, you're going to be a sponsored Titan athlete. That's our goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but I've got no complaints with this. Actually, if anybody's looking for a golf spot, it takes up less room than a uh, like a full lead press. And I feel like you can do more with this than a lead press, and it doesn't load. Again, you could do more hypertrophy. You could do as an accessory after squats, and it's not loading. You're doing any kind of spinal compression. The belt just goes around your waist. But this is the version two. The version one was not adjustable. And when they came out with version two, uh, this piece uh, came out adjustable. Okay. And, well, that was, and then, of course, there was issues with the version one with the, um, oh, I don't know, what, whatever they call them, uh, with the, the, with the stainless, stainless steel coming off, the rivets. Okay. And so there are uh, Allen wrench bolts that bolt them down. There's no issues with it. Now, there is a little bit of a height problem. If you lay it directly on the ground, you can't, Squat really deep because the plates will hit the floor, but that's no problem. Just raise it up. I just raised it up on a couple of pieces of extra stall mats. You can put plywood underneath, and that solves the issue. Um, you know, because now the platform is unraised, but not the part where the plates go. So now I've got more death room. So okay. this, is a, but this is by Frey Fitness, and this is good. A really nice GHD. I don't know if you want to come around. But um, it's got fully adjustable. So, you know, back and forth, you know, this will come up and down to make it harder. Um, and uh, it's got band packs in the front at the bottom there. And so, you know, and the, and the foam and the material is, uh, you know, pretty good quality. I've got no complaints. I, I think it's uh, very good for, uh, you, know, you can do back extensions on here. Oh, but it's great for hammies, especially for strength training, uh, powerlifting, things like that. GHD and reverse hyper, I think is good, good to have. I think the most impressive thing about your gym, other than that floor so far to me, is the fact that you don't have any chalk on the floor. and you got an open chalk bowl. How hard is it to get those kids to not do the LeBron thing, like where they clap their hands and there's chalk everywhere and you just want to murder somebody's child? They, they, still, they still do it. Um, but I had a, I, this was like a, uh, I think at Costco, we ended up getting this. This is a stainless steel cooking bowl that I just drilled a hole on the bottom of it and screwed oh, it in. Okay. I did have it on a bracket on a wall, but on the other side of the gym, and people were trailing chalk and whatever, walking across. So this was actually an old, uh, what was this, a fan? The pipe, I think the pipe was oh, from a lamp. A lamp. Oh, that's right. Yep. It was a lamp. I had some wow. extra. A black pipe, threaded pipe, uh, an odd 10 pound plate that didn't have a partner to it. And uh, I kind of made myself a little, uh, you know, DIY chalk bowl. And of course, it's got the brushes here and the oil uh, for the bars. So. That is slick. Okay. I assume you made your own platform. This is a little overdone, but this is 11 gauge, three by three steel that I ended up um, spray painting it. I mean, when it was new, it looked great. Now it's pretty beat up, but that's okay. Um, I've got engineered hardwood here that I ended up gluing. And then I ended up doing the polyurethane with a rough uh, foam. So that you can actually tell there's a little pop of bubbles that are for it. It's not smooth, and it provides a little bit of attraction. And okay. also decal kind of from off as well. Nice. And then, of course, 
the stall mats. Now underneath the stall mats, I've got more plywood, but I actually have this heavy duty uh, foam here also. And so it uh, kind of minimizes the drop sound a little bit uh, versus just having a, you know, that three quarter inch stall mat right on top of plywood. So yes. that extra foam gives it just a little bit of a crash, uh, you know, buoyancy to it. Not too okay. bad. And you've got another rack. That's the PRX uh, yeah. bench. This, I see that. Is that one of the original, folding racks too? This is the original rack that we had before the pop, before the cage. But then I really wanted a cage. But I love the PRX, and I could sell it. But the issue is, it's not I, the room. I can't replace anything on this wall, you know, because I got the platform. Right. So if I'm going to get something, it's to get something else. If not. And it's great because we actually use both racks at the same time, all the time. Because sometimes I'll have like three or four people in here at once. And so if somebody's squatting or benching, you know, somebody else can be over here on this side, uh, doing overhead press or whatever. And then of course, we, we had this already, which I know it's overkill, we already have a flat bench. But again, um, it's here, it's already on the wall. You know, if I sell it, who's going to, you know, this is a bit specific to this kind of rack. So I know you said that you like it, but how much weight were you able to use with it? Oh, tons and tons of weight. Because what what, what happens is, is actually the, the weight is, is downward pressure more right. than from the wall. And so you oh, can okay. load this one uh, because it's it's the downward gravity pressure. Now, this is very, uh, very good. You've got, got no issues with anything coming off from the wall. We've had this for a few years now, no issues. And the nice That's part about PRX is they're high quality. I mean, they've got a really nice Cerakote, uh, you know, paint. If you were able, if, if you were gonna get, if I was gonna get this rack with this kind of Cerakote paint, it'd be, I mean, expensive. I think that's just powder coat, but the Cerakote uh, with the gloss really uh, can take a beating without scratches or anything. It's really does, nice. they have a, does they have west side spacing or is it just regular? No, I'm regular. Yeah. Okay. These, I'm not sure what these other smaller holes are for, but they're too low to the ground anyway. But yeah. And okay. you can get them taller. We didn't get, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't go with the taller one. Uh, but then there's a like, pull up bar attachment you can get. Um, it's, it's, you know, really nice. Okay. Bottom arms. I was trying to figure out a way to wall mount them. Uh, PRX does now. They came out with a uh, spotter arm. Yeah, they wall. have a, a little wall mount set up there. It looks, it looks nice. Uh, but you know, these hooks right here, you know, they, they work out great. I even, you know, for other people that are using the gym, it, cause they can never remember how to put it back. <laughs> I'll, I'll outline and make it dummy proof. This a uh, T-bar? Yeah, so it's a T-bar supported, uh, chest supported T-bar open type of fitness. Okay. You know, for the money, I think I, it was like less than $400. Uh, now I think you could, if somebody, want, it, it's, it really takes up a lot of room. So I would say maybe save your money, spend a few hundred dollars more and get something from Frey or uh, uh, there's a couple other companies that sell it, a smaller profile. Uh, even ones that have a, uh, uh, that are unilateral, you know, versus one. But, um, but for us, this, this works out great. We do a lot. And then again, I use these, um, clips on the ground so I can attach a band to it. The same thing with the deadlift band. So these D clips on the ground here is for okay. uh, for more band work. And of course, I've got the hex bar and the mace bells. Uh, those mace bells are shoulder mobility and stuff like that. Uh, over here, I forgot, is a uh, my DIY earthquake bar. Oh, okay. Is so, that a PVC? Yep, PVC. There's another PVC inside of it also. I went with an inch and a half on the outside. Uh, it's almost like a two-inch diameter outside just because it can hold more weight. Um, you won't get as of a bend. Some of these other DIYs, they use a, a one-inch pipe, I believe. Uh, but the, the thicker one does make a difference. I put the, uh, you know, like the hockey tape on it too and the rings to position where do they think the, the, their grip is going to be. And we use, we use this for uh, the bench all the time with bands, and it's great. So it saves, you know, three, I mean, I think it's like $300, $325 plus shipping for an earthquake.
bar. I mean, I'm sure it's better than a PC bar, but I can't, just can't see, you know, see spending the money when I can just make this out of 20 bucks, you know? Oh yeah, so I made this calculator um, online and it's through, uh, cause I'm good with Excel. And then the Excel transfers it to a web app <clears throat> and you can just put in your working weight and then it'll tell you what your warm up weight is to get to your working weight is for squat, bench and deadlift. So nice. when people use the gym, they can scan that right in there. Um, oh, nice. You know, things like that. And then of course we got our music speaker. I got an old phone here. So people can use Amazon, Spotify on the phone. And then of course a calculator on the wall. All right, Steven. So in addition to the fact that you are training kids and passing your knowledge, which is very cool. You're also inspiring others in another way, which is with your podcast. So as we close this thing, tell people about your podcast, where they can find it, and also how they can follow your journey on Instagram and any other platforms that you're on. Yeah, so my website is uh, www.cancerhopewithcoachsteve.com. And like I said, I've been fighting stage four cancer for almost two years now. Not in remission. I'm on like 28 rounds of chemo so far. I think three different uh, surgeries, a couple of different major procedures. They split me open. I've got an implantable pump. So I have to use uh, a strongman uh, belt, a Velcro neoprene belt to kind of hold my core in when I work out. And then sometimes I'll use a powerlifting belt on top just because I've got this hockey puck size chemo pump inside me, besides my, um, my medical port which a lot of cancer patients need so they can infuse chemo um, inside so we're still fighting that but at the same time i'm trying to inspire others with cancer to continue physical activity um and to you know keep the hope alive and believe um and strength and so that's that's the podcast i have other cancer uh, fighters and previous survivors i even have had uh crossfit and uh bodybuilders powerlifters on there that dealt with cancer or dealing with cancer currently still, um, they're still lifting. And then John Anderson, uh, I don't know if uh, some of you guys might know him. He's a pro strongman, pro yeah, deep uh, water. wrestler, and now he's pro uh, bodybuilder. Yep. So he was on my podcast too. That That's a great episode. He, he doesn't have any cancer, but his motivation, he wrote a book, um, Deep Water, and uh, it's it's – I would definitely check that episode out if you're a fitness guy. You got you guys might already know John Anderson, so uh, yeah, check him out. And then uh, my what my uh, website for the Iron Junkies is ironjunkiesgym.com. Also got a lot of cool t-shirts, new t-shirt designs, ironjunkiesgear.com, and then on Instagram it's just ironjunkiesgym. That you guys can follow me uh, on there. Sometimes I'll post my own lifts on there. Although the last few months I've been really deconditioned i'm trying to get my strength back chemo's really been doing a uh, a lot on me so i'm trying to get stronger and uh and then of course i'll post um other lifts of other people uh, that come in here and uh, work out 